Welcome to Kadampa Podcasts. These podcasts offer practical solutions to daily challenges and help guide us to a happier and more peaceful state of mind. In each episode, you will find an extract from a teaching given by one of various Kadampa Buddhist teachers worldwide. All these teachings are inspired by the profound wisdom of Venerable Geshe Kalsang Gyatso Rinpoche, a Buddhist master for our time. We hope you will enjoy listening. Because if you've got a problem and a difficulty in your life and you're still standing, you're doing well. If you think, you know, a whole life, whatever age you are, how many problems and difficulties you have faced and you've come in here today. So you've done well, haven't you? Don't you think? You know, when, when we look at, you know, the society as, we ha- as it is now, you know, just high rates of self-destruction, horrendous. And we're here, and we're still here. So we're actually survivors, aren't we? So that's really good. And so we tell ourselves, you know what? You've been through a lot. I mean, even just minor things like teething, learning to teeth. You know, that's a hard thing to survive. And we take it for granted. You know, my daughter who's got triplets, she's got three at the moment teething. And it's a hard challenge for those babies and for her, you know. So we survived teething. Do you remember what do you know what it's like to have a toothache? We've all had toothache. Isn't it horrendous? It's one of those pains. Of all the pains, it really is awful because you can't get to it, can't you? You can't really ease it, etc. Okay. <clears throat> well, when we were little, we grew our teeth. <laughs> and we survived. And here we are. Do you know what I mean? Like it is amazing. When you really, you know, you watch little human beings developing. And what they have to learn to become independent. It is phenomenal. Learning to walk, learning to talk, learning to deal with people in the playground, all this stuff. And we're here, aren't we? And they're just normal things, let alone whatever difficulties and problems we've had with people in our lives throughout our childhood. But we're here. So that's great. So we, we have survived a human life to this point. Well done. So this is our voice. This has to be our voice. It has to be one of encouragement. Throughout my life, I have dealt with all sorts of things. I'm still here, and I can deal with this. It might, I might not deal with it perfectly, yeah, but I will deal with it. I might not quite understand right now how to deal with it, but if I just allow my mind to relax, maybe the answer will come. Or maybe the answer is you do nothing. It's true, isn't it? So many problems in life, when we get really worked up about them, we get anxious and stressed, we start a knee-jerk reaction and make everything worse because we feel like we've got to do something. But often, what we have to do is nothing. It's amazing how many things disappear when you do nothing (laughs) and how things get worse. If you end up from an emotional state, do a lot of stuff and it all gets worse. So we need to uh, understand that our our thoughts are transient, okay? So no matter how difficult sometimes our mental pain is, and I know it can be so, so hard sometimes, it's transient. It's just a moment of mind. We don't just have one feeling or one thought and it stays with us, do we? It's not possible. I think how many thoughts and feelings you've had already. What time is it? 11 o'clock. Right? How many? Could you count them? I couldn't. Definitely not. If I'd counted every thought and feeling, you know, and it's only 11 o'clock. <laughs> so our mind is continuously moving. So this is important to think about. So, no, so this means that no matter how difficult my mind feels, it's just a moment of mind. Because right? what often we do is we get this uh, negative response to a situation or we get sometimes nothing externally happen and it can just be something mental thought, can't it, about something that's happened in the past or something we'd like to happen in the future. And what happens is we just get this very, very unpleasant feeling. And we then identify with that and we think that it's permanent. But it's just a moment. It's just a moment of mind. You know, if if we really think about our mind, it is quite unstable, really, isn't it? (laughs) Do you know? 
it can just, you know, it just moves from different extremes all the time. Okay, so sometimes all we need to do is sit with that unpleasant feeling and it will pass or distract ourselves and it will pass. But what we shouldn't do is identify with it and think, this is me. I'm a miserable, negative, depressed, horrible person. <laughs> all right, just in that moment, we have unpleasant feeling and we don't feel great. Maybe and our mind feels quite weak and we don't feel that we can deal with things just in that moment. But it doesn't mean that we're always going to feel like that. So it's seeing that the thoughts and feelings are transitory. And that, yes, of course, painful thoughts and feelings will arise. For all of us, we, you know, we're, we're, we're good at masking it. Other people don't always necessarily know because we're like the swarm, you know. So we can mask it. But we're getting lots of painful thoughts and feelings all the time. But they only become strong if we hang on to them. Right? So the longer you hang on to it, the stronger it gets, the heavier the mind gets. Yeah? So the longer we hold on to our negative thoughts, the heavier the mind gets. So this process of hanging on to our negative thoughts, be them about ourselves, be them about other people, um, is what's, what Buddha called inappropriate attention. Okay, It's inappropriate because it's not helpful. Okay, If something's appropriate, it's helpful. It's inappropriate and it's attention. So the mind is focused upon something and it's holding it and it's not letting it go. And the longer we hold it, the heavier it gets. You know, it's like that analogy, isn't it, of someone holding a glass of water and some, then someone saying, how heavy is it? And the person says, well, it depends how long I hold it. Because okay? holding a glass of water like that initially would be quite easy, wouldn't it? <laughs> but no big deal, would it? Here I am doing my weight exercises every day right, with this glass of water. But if I just stand here for three hours and you come back, how heavy is this glass of water? Yeah, and when I put it down, my arm will be aching, won't it? Okay, so it's, it doesn't actually matter how heavy the water is. The fact is that I've held on to it. The longer I hold on to it, the heavier it gets. Okay? And so, you know, all of us, we've had a lifetime of various problems and difficulties and challenges. And if we hold on to them and we're always thinking about them, then the mind is getting heavier and heavier and heavier. Okay? And as the darkness sets into our mind, then, of course, it's surrounded, isn't it, by all sorts of feelings. And then we lose ourselves. You know, that feeling, you just got lost somewhere in your mind. And, and even people who are around you, who are kind and, and like you, you know, and they try to draw you out. When you're really lost in that place, there's nothing anyone can say, is there? You can't, they can't reach you because you're lost in this sea this negative place, because you've held it too long, okay? So the next thing we need to learn to do then is to become aware of how long are we holding our negative thoughts, okay? How long are we holding them? And how long should we hold them? Do you think we should hold them for five minutes, ten minutes? Okay, we've got a negative thought that's telling us that we're useless, that we, we can't cope with this situation. Right, here it is. How long do you think is an appropriate time to hold that? I think we need to drop it immediately, don't we? <laughs> okay. We need to drop it immediately. Okay. So you can see what we've got here going then is a mindfulness practice, okay, where we're watching the mind and making sure that what we're holding on to is not negative stuff. Because the longer we hold it, the more unhappy we'll become. So it's so we've got to. Uh, so Buddhism, uh, people sometimes don't understand this, but people, Buddhism uh, is all about becoming an inner being. But this doesn't mean that you become so obsessed with yourself you don't care about anybody else. Um, it, it's that you're just watching all the time what's going on in the mind. You've got an awareness all the time of what's going on in the mind. It's interesting because we've generally got some awareness of what's going on in the body. And we've generally got some awareness of what threats are coming to the body. Even now, there'll be some sense of you, 
you know, you've made sure that you're comfortable and you're safe and all the rest of it. You know what I mean? You're, you're checking, aren't you? There's a part of us that's always a little bit vigilant to make sure that um, our body is safe. And we, we care for what we do with this body in different ways, you know, depending how much of a thrill seeker we are. But we wouldn't, any of us wouldn't run straight across a motorway okay, without looking, you know. So because we, we want to protect this body, but we don't have the same idea about protecting the mind. Okay? We have to protect our mind because it's our mind that determines how we experience and view our reality. So if our mind is very negative all the time, then we will feel uh, very unhappy. And when we look out from this negative place, then all we see are faults and problems. Okay? So we've got to protect our mind. It's so, so very important. We've got to protect our mind. And so one way of protecting it is by monitoring what's in it. Okay? Monitor what's in the mind. Thinking, okay, what am I thinking? Oh, all right, this, uh, this is not a good thought for me. Because if I follow this way of thinking, what's going to happen? I'm just going to get more and more unhappy. Yeah? So it's this, this feeling, okay, this is not, this is not good for me. Okay? So we stop our inappropriate attention. So negative minds, uh, Buddha called negative minds delusions. And the definition of delusion is, is um, a mind or, or part of mind that arises from inappropriate attention and functions to make us feel unpeaceful. Okay? So whenever the mind starts to feel unpeace, unpeaceful, there's some negative or delusion going on in the mind. And it's been allowed to stay in there too long. Okay? So again, you know, if someone's going to say to you, well, you, uh, you know, you'll never have negative minds again. Uh, as an ordinary human, per human being with an ordinary life, I don't think that's possible. We are going to have negative minds. Okay? We are. But our job is to be aware when they're, when they're appearing and not allow them to establish themselves. We've got to drop them. So there is a point when the mind is moving towards some negativity, be it about ourselves or about somebody else, um, where we can actually distract the mind from it. But if we stay with it for too long, there's no way we can. It gets a hook on us. You know when you get to that point where you feel, you're thinking about something and you just want to stop? But no matter what you do, it keeps coming back in your mind. You know that feeling? And sometimes even at night, you, you, you go to bed, you wake up in the middle of the night, you're still thinking about it. Like it's just, it's so entrenched within your mind that you can't shift away from it. So that's an indication you've let, you've let it in, you've let it stay in too long. Okay? So what we've got to do is we've got to find it in the early stages. So this is real mindfulness. You've got to be really watching. What is my mind thinking? rather than thinking, what do I look like in this situation? Or how am I appearing to others? Which is where we're often thinking very externally focused. We've got to start monitoring our mind throughout the day. Now, I know this sounds like it'll be very time consuming. You know, you think, well, I've got a very busy life and I'm running around, blah, blah, blah. How am I going to have time to also be checking? How's my mind? Okay. But it, it becomes, um, at, at the beginning, it is a little bit clunky, a little bit awkward, but eventually you get used to it and you can start to feel when the mind is turning towards some negative thoughts and you can then steer it back because there's a definite change in energy. So when the mind becomes unpeaceful, so whenever our mind is unpeaceful, Buddha would say that is because we have some negative thoughts in there. Now, again, that's really challenging because we tend to think, um, our mind uh, becomes unpeaceful um, because of external circumstances. And we tend to think, well, you know, it's not possible to have a peaceful mind because there's so many difficulties and problems. Whereas what Bud Buddha says is that um, our mind becomes unpeaceful through our inappropriate attention because we're holding these negative thoughts. 
So a negative, a negative mind will always find an object. It will always find something to be negative about. And it can be something in the past, the future, something that's going on in our life now. But once we've got this negative energy, it will always find an object. Okay? So we've got to, um, we've definitely got to become much more aware, much more mindful of what's going on in the mind. Okay? We've got to, we've got to. So in order to uh, shift our awareness in this way, um, we have to be convinced that always focusing on our external world is not the way forward. Okay? So as, as human beings, we're very externally focused. You know, we're always trying to um, change our environment, change our relationships, everything to give rise to happiness, don't we? So if we're unhappy, the first thing we think of is I need to change something. Don't we? We just think, oh, I need to change something. It can be anything. It can be our hair, our shoes, our curtains, our carpets, our partners, our kids, our jobs, our whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like, but if human, we're just, it's not normal. We all do this. As soon as we get a negative feeling, it's like, oh, God, it's like, not even conscious. It doesn't even actually say these words, I've got to change something. But the mind shifts. And if you check it, what's it doing? It's trying to change things, thinking, oh, what can I change? What can I get rid of so that my life becomes easier? So, um, so Buddha said, but if, if our happiness depends upon external things alone, then there actually is no hope because our external world is one that naturally gives rise to suffering without choice. Uh, he said, you know, he said, um, aging is like an immovable mountain. Sickness is like an immovable mountain. Um, death is like an immovable mountain. So in other words, we have no choice. So what we need is an in, inner mental power so that our, our mind becomes um, like a mind of steel. Yeah? So it's funny, it's like we need a mind of steel, but it also needs to be very kind and compassionate. Yeah? So it's quite, quite interesting. Because so, sometimes when people hear this, we need a mind of steel, they think, oh, so Buddhism's all about becoming very, just focusing on yourself really rock hard, not caring about others. And it's not actually, it's the opposite. The more stable your own mind is, the more you're able to benefit and help others. You know, when our mind is out of control, we're not really much help to anyone, are we? Okay. So um, we're trying to make our mind much more powerful. Uh, so uh, one uh, great Buddhist master, he said uh, something like, um, whoever uh, I see, whether they're of high status, low status, uh, whether they are young, old, uh, male, female, lay or ordained, they differ only in, um, in, uh, in appearance and behavior. In essence, they are all the same. Everybody, without exception, experiences problems. Right? So understanding this, one of the positive thoughts that we can start to develop is I have this human life. Within this human life, there are problems and difficulties, but I want a meaningful life. Okay? So it's a determination arising from this. I want a meaningful life. So I accept that I will have all these problems and difficulties and challenges, but within this life, I want a meaningful one. How do I achieve this? I achieve this by learning to hold meaningful objects, meaningful thoughts and feelings within my mind. Okay? So when our mind is holding meaningful thoughts and feelings, these are ones that make our life meaningful, make us feel meaningful, um, then our mind is peaceful, regardless of what's happening externally. Okay? Because I'm sure you've also had times in your life that have been very, very difficult, but your mind has been at peace. And because it has been at peace, dealing with those challenges and problems has been okay. We've sort of had maybe experience of both. If you feel inspired by this podcast, then dive deeper into timeless wisdom of modern Kadampa Buddhism by following the link in the episode description. We look forward to reconnecting with you in the next episode of Kadampa Podcasts.